guys, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. In this turbulent time where the risk of global recession remains high, India's growth chart is showing a ray of hope. The Morgan Stanley report titled Why This Is India's Decade has estimated that India has the conditions in place for an economic boom fueled by offshoring, investment in manufacturing, the energy transition and the country's advanced digital infrastructure. Let's talk about the new India, which is fast leading towards becoming world's third largest economy. India's Tata Advanced Systems Limited, in collaboration with Airbus, will manufacture C-295 military transport planes under the Make in India initiative. The foundation stone for the Tata Airbus plant was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Vadodara, Gujarat. This is considered by many to be India's big leap into becoming a global hub for manufacturing large aircraft, both passenger and cargo. The Tata Airbus plant will generate 15,000 new skilled jobs and will also provide business to over 100 micro, small and medium enterprises. India's mantra of Make in India, Made for the Globe, continues to enhance the country's capabilities in many different industries and areas. Now, Bharat transport plane ka bhi bahut bada nirmata banega. Aaj Bharat mein iski shuruat ho rahi. Aur mein wo din dekh raha hain. जब दुनिया के बड़े पैसेंजर प्लेन्स भी भारत में ही बनेंगे और उन पर लिखा होगा मेक इन इंडिया द वर्ल्ड इज लुकिंग टुवर्ड्स इंडियाज रोबस्ट मार्केट व्हिच इज फास्ट रिकवरिंग फ्रॉम द कोविड-19 पेंडेमिक be it relaxing foreign direct investment norms across several sectors or launching the production linked incentive scheme aiming to make indian manufacturers globally competitive the indian government has been the driving force behind india's economic recovery recently india's economy overtook the united kingdom's in terms of nominal gdp making it the fifth largest in the world the Morgan Stanley Why This Is India's Decade Report further predicts that India will become the world's third largest economy and stock market before the end of the decade. Yes, it is possible and uh, it's important to again fully unlock this this entrepreneurial potential in the economy and uh, and link firms to 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 markets to 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 new ways of doing business and and to technologies and uh, and 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 it's you know that's that's the way to get there how will india reshape its future growth as per the morgan stanley report india's per capita annual income is set to rise from 2278 usd to 5242 USD in 2031 setting the stage for a discretionary spending boom the report also estimates that global spending on outsourcing could rise from 180 billion USD per year to around 500 billion USD by 2030 which will have significant effects on both commercial and residential real estate demand the report praised india's adar system the foundational id for all indians designed to facilitate high volume financial transactions at low cost with small value transactions further the report estimates that india's manufacturing share of its gdp will rise from 21.6% to 41% by 2031 implying an incremental 1 trillion usd manufacturing opportunity India's global export market share is also expected to almost double from 2.3% to 4.5% by 2031, providing an incremental 1.2 trillion USD export opportunity. 
India's services exports will almost triple to 527 billion USD, from 178 billion USD in 2021 over the next decade. From e-commerce to internet penetration, passenger vehicle sales to residential property, the new India will shape the new world order in the next coming decade. Moving on. As Nepal election date inches closer, parties across the Nepalese political spectrum have intensified their campaigning. While some have promised jobs and education, others are relying on socialist approach. Some have even tried rhetoric. Amidst all of this, country's foreign policy has also taken the center stage. KP Sharma Oli, the former Nepalese Prime Minister, has said he would maintain balanced relations with both India and China if he returns to power. As Nepal general elections inches closer, all parties have stepped up their campaign. Amidst this, Nepal's main communist opposition party has said it will balance the Himalayan nation's ties with neighbors China and India for mutual benefit if it is returned to power in a general election this month. Both Asian giants have been locked in a high-stakes battle for influence in Nepal, sandwiched between two countries, longing for a friendly government in Kathmandu. India, Nepal's biggest trade and economic partner, sees it as a natural ally and has invested billions of dollars in its infrastructure. Beijing has also made inroads lately and signed projects under its Belt and Road Initiative. They are big powers. Our policy of neutrality and uh, non-aligned uh, will be genuinely followed will be. genuinely genuinely followed and uh, implemented uh, we will be reliable friends reliable. friend and neighbors neighbor of both of our neighbors our foreign policy will be based on mutual benefit, mutual respect. The 70-year-old KP Sharma Oli is a favorite for Prime Minister if his loose alliance with royalists and a group of regional parties dominant in the Southern Plains wins a majority in the November 20 election for the 275-member National Parliament. He is facing the ruling alliance of Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deva with the Maoist Centre Party led by Prachanda, who headed a decade-long insurgency that ended in 2006. Both Deva and Prachanda are vying for the top job. For the good governance, for the rule of law, and for the economic development in our lives, for the modernization of agriculture, to establish and develop the industries and develop a basically self-reliance economy, self-independent self economy. Uh, so for all these things, people have to put their most to your hand. The election is taking place as Nepal faces the highest inflation in six years caused by rising energy prices after Russia's invasion of Ukraine and amid growing fears of an economic slowdown following monetary tightening. Oli said the present government had no vision to tackle inflation, higher interest rates and faltering economic growth. Retail inflation is currently hovering over 8% and bank lending rates have gone up to over 18%. In its election manifesto released a few days ago, Oli's party has also promised to create 500,000 jobs every year. The other parties too are trying to vote through both the announcement of social and welfare schemes. Moving on. Pakistan remains deeply entangled in a never-ending political crisis which is leading to chaos and uncertainty throughout the country.
Mass anti-government protests by the opposition, increasing violence and growing conflicts between political parties and the army have put the already distressed country at a standstill. Join us for an inside story on Pakistan's political battle and its impact on South Asia. On October 27, an unprecedented press conference was held by the ISI chief to clarify the Pakistan Army's position regarding former Prime Minister Imran Khan's politics and to deny Army Chief Kumar Javed Bajwa's involvement in removing the popular former Pakistan cricket legend from the top job. A week later, former cricketer turned politician Imran Khan was shot in the leg in an assassination attempt while leading the long march of his supporters in Punjab's Wazirabad. To make matters worse, the Shabazz Sharif-led Pakistan government immediately gagged Pakistani media from telecasting any speeches or press conferences of Imran Khan. What were they trying to hide? There is a clear and increasing rift between Imran Khan and the Pakistan army since he was removed as prime minister in a parliamentary confidence vote in April. Imran Khan had alleged that the deep state forces in Pakistan had entered into a conspiracy to remove him as Prime Minister. Imran Khan made his first appearance after his shooting on November 4, in a long, rambling press conference where he placed the blame on Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, Interior Minister Rana Sanola, and Intelligence Official Major General Faisal Nazir for the attempt on his life. Rana Sanaullah. Rana Sanaullah ne kyun banaya? Kyunki Rana Sanaullah ek katil hai. Rana Sanaullah aur Shabaz Sharif ne dusri taraf Shabaz Sharif. Shabaz Sharif ke upar Human Rights Watch ki report hai ya Amnesty International ki report hai. Uske baad ye do inhone is plan ke andar ye shamil hue aur saath mil gaye inke General, Major General Faisal, in three ne faisla kiya, mujhe katal karne ka. Aur phir, hua kya? Pakistan has a long history of political violence. Former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto was assassinated in December 2007 in a gun and bomb attack after holding an election rally in Rawalpindi next to Islamabad. Her father, the former Prime Minister and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, was hanged in the same city in 1979 after being deposed in a military coup. The Pakistan Army and spy agencies, the ISI and military intelligence, play a significant role in Pakistan's politics. Shadowy deals made with political parties, the judiciary, religious extremists, and terrorist groups have been widely exposed. It is this political culture that Imran Khan has been able to successfully exploit, either as a full participant and leader, or, since his removal from power, as critic and staunch opponent. Imran Khan, in his current role as critic of the ruling powers, is managing to rally support for his movement for Hakiki Azadi, or real freedom. Khan's aim, and the reason for this long march in Wazirabad, was to disrupt the status quo, force an early election and return to power, and to compel the army and the ISI to be supportive of his ambitions. There is a view in Pakistan that Imran Khan rode to power at the back of the support from the army. So uh, he uh, he's actually not uh, happy that the army has uh, kind of left him. Uh, there are many reasons uh, why uh, he had to go, but one of the prime reasons that he is uh, advancing is because the neutrals, he calls the army neutrals. The neutrals have started backing someone else. Uh, and he also brings in the uh, foreign uh, uh, conspiracy a case. 
Political volatility in Pakistan causes severe damage to the country's growth, especially to its struggling citizens, who are already coping with high inflation and economic volatility. This instability and volatility in Pakistan is destabilizing for South Asia, and especially for its relations with neighboring India. In the absence of any diplomatic engagement, the rather fragile relations between India and Pakistan are being kept up only by means of an unwritten ceasefire that began in 2003 and was salvaged from near breakdown last year only. India will continue to remain vigilant and closely monitor Pakistan's fragile political climate so it can best protect itself and its citizens. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Yokohama Nissan Stadium is a multi-purpose stadium with a 72,000 seat capacity. Not only sports but also music concerts and other events are also organized in this stadium. Since the Ordo Shogunate reigned, Yokohama has served as a gateway to the Western world. The city has a long history of sports. It was the Edo period in 1866 when samurais walked the streets with swords in their hands. The rugby club was also established with the first Japanese soccer game being held in 1888. After the construction of the Yokohama International Stadium in 1998, sports in the Japanese city received a further push. Later, the FIFA World Cup, the Rugby World Cup and the Tokyo Olympic Games were held there in 2002, 2019 and 2020 respectively. え、こちらが選手が使うロッカールームになっております。え、今日はですね、特別に 2002 its shock absorbing function helps to keep athletes safe and its well groomed flat surfaces ensure exciting play. Three big world sports events are preserved as delightful and exciting memories of Yokohama citizens. The stadium, a well known Yokohama attraction, engraves a delightful sports history. It is visited not just by Japanese citizens but foreigners as well. Japanese company Casio has launched a minimally designed digital piano that sounds exactly like the original. The PXS7000 is designed to provide a rich musical experience to its users. The PXS7000 is launched to meet the needs of modern musicians who wish to innovate their music. Casio investigated market trends and the needs of piano users to come up with this product. The stylish design brought a new image to this piano. Casio's designer researched word adaptability. The design concept is a piano Minimal あの、美しい。Casio is sophisticated global company. 
the Casio designer researched global furniture design, particularly in the United Kingdom, to determine its suitability for global households. The new digital piano, the PXS7000, is a revolution in the history of global piano players. Festivals are larger than life celebrations here in India. Furthermore, they give you the chance to celebrate the little and big things in life. India is one of the largest countries to celebrate numerous festivals. As India is a very cultural and diverse country, so are the festivals. Dev Dipavali is one of them. This great festival of Kashi's Dev Dipavali has a direct relation with Lord Shiva. Let us know what the story behind it is. India's northern town of Varanasi glittered with the lights of hundreds of thousands of earthen lamps as Hindu marked Dev Dipavali, a festival that commemorates several Hindu mythological events, one being the victory of Hindu Lord Shiva over the demon Tripurasur. The festival, also known as Tripurutsav, is considered one of the most auspicious events in Hindu calendar Panchang and people from across the country and abroad visit the site to be a part of the celebrations. Following holy rituals including the bathing in the river Ganga, they light earthen lamps, locally referred as Diyas, to mark the event. Held 15 days after India's biggest festival of Dipavali, this year's Dev Dipavali celebration registered a record lighting of over a million earthen lamps across the town. The city twinkled as soon as the dusk set in. The steps of all the guards on the river front of the Ganga were lit with earthen lamps. Not only the guards of Ganga, but also the temples were lit with millions of diyas. भगवान का अभी कुछ दिनों पहले दिव्य दीपोत्सव यहाँ मनाया गया और उसके बाद राम राज्य यहाँ पर चल रहा है चारों तरफ बहुत खुशियाली है जगह-जगह दिए जलाए जा रहे हैं आज यहाँ पर रामोत्सव में एक लाख दीपक जलाए गए According to religious beliefs, on the day of Kartik Purnima, the first full moon after Diwali, all the gods and goddesses come down from heaven to earth. It is also believed that all deities do become a part of the celebrations. Owing to the significance and the growing socio-cultural popularity of this festival, the festival is increasingly getting popular and is now celebrated in other parts of the country too. People from across the country also visit Varanasi to get a glimpse and first-hand experience of the festival. I am from Pune. I have come to see this Dev I have heard that the Dev Dipavali is very good in the Banaras. But what I have heard is that when the Dev Dipavali came, I got more than that. I am very happy, I am very happy, I am very happy. और बहुत खुश हूँ कि मैं मुझे आज ये सौभाग्य मिला कि अपने सामने मैं इतनी अच्छी व्यवस्था और पूजन देख पाया। According to another belief, this day marks the end of the month-long festival, which begins after the Hindu Lord Vishnu wakes up after a four-month slumber from July to October. The reasons behind could be diverse, but the essence of the festival remains the same and a similar pomp and fervor is witnessed every year. Festivals of Lights add an altogether different level of fervor to the festivities. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.